hormones, okay? For the most part from the medulla, epinephrine. But I kind of tried to explain the norepinephrine. The cortex, mineralose, glucose, andros, okay? For the most part, mineralose want to act strictly on the kidneys, okay? For the glucose and the androgens, they're going to go on to affect other parts or other tissues of the body. Now, in this adrenal gland, we can actually have hypo and hyper secretion. Your textbook goes into good detail about some of these um, resulting effects of the hypo and the hyper secretion. In the hypo secretion, it could come from removal of the gland or the loss of the function of it. Have you ever heard of Addison's disease? Okay, this would be Addison's disease. In the hyper secretion, there can actually be a tumor in that um, gland. We could have Cushing syndrome, and your textbook does a good job of talking about Cushing syndrome also. And so you can end up with the androgens having an androgen syndrome that'll take place. This is where for women, it usually leads to what's termed the hirsutism, okay? And that is where the woman is getting overly masculinized, okay? Um, usually there's an increase, for example, in the facial hair. They tend to have more acne, tend to have a greater sex drive, tend to not have as much of the breasts that are, that are gonna form, and they might also stop menstruating depending on the effect of this disorder. So lovely, lovely adrenal glands. Our pancreas. <coughs> Ever heard of it? It's an endocrine as well as an exocrine gland. It does both. Endocrine, because it will make stuff that is staying right there, and exocrine, stuff will leave the gland. We find it along the small intestines and stomach, just a little bit towards the back, retroperitoneal, meaning towards the back, okay? It's exocrine because of the digestive juices that it will produce to go on to help with digestion of food. It's endocrine. It's endocrine because it has these things that are pancreatic isolates. <laughs> Y'all are seeing that, right? Good, okay. It's got a light right beside the lamp replaced. So the uh, lamp needs to be replaced. I can't do that. I had to go. Now, okay, um, what's an islet? An island. That's it. It's just an island. So that means in this gland, you're gonna have this cellular makeup that looks like an island after an island after an island, okay? And they're gonna be termed pancreatic isolates. Now they're composed of alpha, beta, delta. Everybody kinda knows Greek, right? Okay, alpha, beta, delta. Alpha cells secrete glucagon. What does that make you think about? Sugar. Glucose. Our sugars again. Okay? So now, glucagon. 
that can help raise the concentration of glucose in the blood. Glucagon can help raise the concentration of glucose in the blood. Which one decreases it? Insulin. Insulin. So glucagon is the opposite of insulin. So it can help raise the concentration <clears throat> of glucose in the blood. The beta cells secrete the insulin. decrease the sugar. In the utopian body, everybody knows what I mean by utopia, right? Everything's perfect, okay? Alpha and beta work together and maintain the good glucose levels. Those delta cells secrete somatostatin. We heard of that one earlier in the chapter. I see men thinking. Growth hormone was also known, or the growth hormone inhibiting hormone was also known as somatostatin. The inhibiting hormone? Inhibiting. So this is an inhibiting growth hormone? Well, that, that's also known as the growth hormone inhibiting hormone. So GHIH. So therefore, it's having an effect on the endocrine system as a whole. And one of the things that it will do is to inhibit insulin and glucagon secretion. Because in the island, there are the three cells. Therefore, utilization of our glucose. We need glucose for what? Energy production, energy usage. This is one, 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 one of those islands. So if we look at this island, this is termed that pancreatic islet. They're trying to show us the different cells by way of the colors. The darker purple, I guess we should say, alpha. All these lighter colored ones, beta. And then they're going to try to show us just a couple of the delta cells. Which ones are the deltas? We begin to look. Oh, that's our blood supply. Um, alphabet, they're not showing a delta. Let okay. me see. It's the other book. Do you, yeah. It's in 645. 645. And figure 17 below. Thank you. Okay, so page 645. Oh, yeah, this was the, this was the view I remember. 645. Got the little breakout right here, and it's trying to show you there's there's only they're just showing you a couple 
of the delta cells. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So the majority of what we see are going to be the beta cells. Now, so far as this little isolate, this little islet, okay, it has a very well vascularized part. In other words, it's got a very good blood supply. And we're going to find that it's also innervated for this control of the insulin and the glucagon, uh, the glucagon, the insulin, the somatostatin, all of it coming down to an effect on the glucose. So if we look at insulin and glucagon, Insulin, the structure is actually the protein itself. So that means that those cells have to actually make that protein that will be in that membrane. Remember how you make it and it'll take it to the cell and spit it out? Okay, so DNA will code for the insulin it will make the protein, the protein will get packaged, it will get shuffled to the cell membrane, fuse with the cell membrane, and get spit out of the cell for our insulin. Okay? The insulin is then going to enter the bloodstream and have an, an effect on the glucose levels. All right? But the job is to increase uptake and use. That means insulin needs to go to the cells, unlock it so that glucose can move in. Does that make sense? Now the glucagon, the glucagon a string of amino acids. That string of amino acids, for the most part, goes to the liver. Now, in the liver, if we have um, taken in our foodstuffs, and in our foodstuffs taken in the glucose, what is our short-term storage of glucose? Our glycogen and we store it in the muscle cells and the liver. So if this can make its way to the liver, it can help promote the breakdown of glycogen from the liver cells. And if that can happen, the liver can convert it to glucose and release it into the bloodstream as glucose. Do you remember how we need to maintain glucose levels in between meals or overnight. Do you remember how we talked about that? And why do we need to maintain those glucose levels in the blood between meals and overnight? For the brain. For the brain, because we need to make sure that we supply the brain first with glucose, because it's the only molecule that the brain can use. Does everybody remember that? Okay, so I got some good stuff going on right here with insulin and glucagon. Yes, no, maybe? The somatostatin peptide means we got a string of amino acids. Okay, don't know how long. All right. Inhibit the secretion of both of them. So if my levels of glucose are okay in the blood, I don't need them to go up or go down. 